morning my darlings thank you for joining me today on this video if you're new to this channel my name is Annie and I post two crime cases here on my channel so if you enjoy this type of content do not hesitate to subscribe to my channel so today's case takes us to Sao Paulo Brazil one of the world's most popular cities rich in culture food and tradition it was here in 2008 that a young child lost her life in a case that would become one of Brazil's most sensationalized cases. This is the case of Isabella Nardoni. Isabella Nardoni was born on the 18th of April 2002. Her father was Alexandre Alves Nardone and her mother was Anna Carolina Cunha de Oliveira. Both Alexandre and Anna Carolina met in high school and began their relationship that went on for like three years. They were young and in love. I think Alexandre was Anna Carolina's first boyfriend, so she was hopelessly in love with him. About the time she turned 17, she found out she was pregnant and she told Alexandre about it. Alexandre, who was 22 years old at the time, was not happy about this news that Anna Carolina was expecting at all. They didn't plan this. He didn't want a child. He wanted to graduate high school and proceed to law school. In Brazil, you, you didn't need um, a college education to go to law school, you know. You can just go straight from high school to study law. So this was what Alexandre Nardoni had in mind. Now his dreams were about to be shattered because Anna Carolina had fallen pregnant. But there was nothing he could do other than to just walk around the situation and deal with it. So he and Anna Carolina considered maybe moving in together so they could continue with school and why um, Alexandre would also work part-time to take care of the family. But ultimately that didn't work out because the two were not seeing eye to eye at all. It was obvious Alexandre didn't want that child. Anna Carolina moved in with her parents and gave birth to a very beautiful baby girl she named Isabella. At her parents' house, she had all the support that she needed. Her parents just loved on their granddaughter Isabella very, very much. Meanwhile, the relationship between Anna Carolina and Alexandre seemed to be in a state of steady decline. Alexandre had gained admission into law school way before Isabella was born. So by this time, he was a student, right? So there at law school, he met another law student called Anna Etoba, and he began to have a romantic relationship with Anna Etoba why Anna Carolina was still pregnant with Isabella. I think you are understanding what I'm saying. Well, Alexandra was in a relationship with both Annas for over one year, and Anna Yetoba, she knew that he was already in a relationship with someone with whom he had a child, but she didn't care. Meanwhile, Anna Carolina at first didn't know that Alexandra had been cheating on her with a cosmic, but around 11 months after Isabella was born, she got to know about the other woman. So she ended the relationship with Alexandre and moved on with her life. Things were not easy for her. She didn't have a job to take care of Isabella by herself. So she involved the authorities and they compared Alexandre to begin to pay child support since he had a job. The money was about 250 Brazilian real, I think. It was just about 80 US dollars each if you convert it to US dollars. So as Isabella grew, Anna Yetoba had to go look for a job to support what she was getting from Alexandre because Isabella's need had grown as well. So she and Alexandre Nadoni established a routine where Alexandre would have Isabella over from Friday to Sunday night twice in a month while Anna Carolina would have her for the rest of the days in the month. By this time, Alexandre had gotten married to his classmate, that was the second Anna, Anna Yetoba, whom he had cheated on Anna Carolina with. And they already had two sons between them, that's Pietro and Carl, who were three years and 11 months respectively. Fast forward to a couple of years later, on March the 29th, 2008, it was a Saturday and Isabella had been spending that weekend with her father, her stepmother and her step-siblings. She had just come over the previous day, being Friday, based on the arrangements uh, Anna Carolina and Alessandri had. That evening, they had all gone to a shopping mall to get some groceries. I think they all went to Sam's Club and it was said that they couldn't return home with them because they couldn't pay for the groceries. Apparently, their car declined for whatever reasons. So, very angry and pissed, Anna Yatuba matched the kids to the car and they drove home. 
But something went down in that car before they got home. Little Isabella, who, by the way, was about five years old, going on six, was attacked and beaten in the car by her stepmother, Anna Yotoba. It's not clear what her exact offense was, not like it justified anything, but Anna Yotoba would later say she beat Isabella because she was bugging them. What does that even mean? A child is bugging you, then you beat her. And Anna Yotoba beat this girl viciously until she bled. There was a mark on her forehead like she had been backhanded with a ring or a set of keys and she spilled real vital body fluids in the car but nobody knew this had happened until much later. So let me tell you the events that led to all of this being revealed. That night when they all got back from shopping at about 10.30 or thereabout, Isabella Oliveira Nadoni was dropped from the window of her father's sixth floor apartment at the London building in the Tukuruvi district in North Zone, Sao Paulo. When she fell, she landed in the front garden of the apartment building. The doorman was first to hear a loud noise and when he looked, he saw Isabella on the floor. A resident on the first floor also had the same crash. According to him, it sounded like a door slamming and when he looked from the balcony, he saw Isabella and he ran downstairs immediately while calling the emergency services at the same time. It took the ambulance like 13 minutes or thereabout to arrive, but when they eventually did, they found the little girl, Isabella, suffering from cardiac arrest. They immediately began to work on her for about 13 minutes or so. I think it was even more. They tried to resuscitate her or at least stabilize her before moving her to the hospital. But unfortunately, Isabella passed away while they were taking her to the hospital. The police too were at the scene and they took Isabella's father Alexandre and her stepmother Anna Yetoba to the station for an interview. They wanted to know how the five-year-old fell from the sixth floor. Alexandre told police officers that when he and the family had arrived back home from shopping, Isabella had already been sleeping in the car, so he carried her up to the apartment first while his wife and two sons were left back in the car in the building's parking garage. His plan was to come back for them soon as he had tucked Isabella in. So on getting to the apartment, he placed Isabella in the guest room which she uses each time she came around. Then he turned on the bedside lamp and then another lamp in the boys room. He locks the door behind him and then goes back down to the car to get the boys. So he says when he gets to the car, he carries one of the boys while Anna Yetoba carries the other and they all head back to the apartment. But when they arrived at the apartment, he couldn't find Isabella in her bed where he had just tucked her in a few minutes ago before he went down, right? But the light in the room was still on. He had only been away for like 5 to 10 minutes thereabouts, so it was confusing for Isabella not to be where he had left her. He said he had sent someone briefly as he came in. The person was running out of the apartment building, but he didn't think much of it at the time. According to him, it was at this point he noticed a hole in the window safety net. The safety net is just this covering we have to keep our mosquitoes and insects. It's placed outside the window. That means you need to open up the window first to access the safety net itself. So Alexander proceeded to tell police that when he sees the window screen cut open, he looks down and out of the window and sees Isabella's body laying on the front yard. At this point, he yells at his wife, Anna Yetoba, to call his father quickly. I don't know why his own father should be the first point of call when there was an emergency such as this. So while the neighbors were calling emergency services, Alexander was asking that his father, Antonio, who by the way was an attorney, should be called first. Anna Yetoba calls Alexander's father, then she proceeds to call her own father before finally putting a call across to the emergency services. Meanwhile, Alexander runs down to Isabella, gets down on his knees and puts his right ear to her, the girl's heart to see if she was still alive while being careful not to touch her. All this time, he was saying that someone must have thrown her through the window while he was downstairs helping his wife Isabella's stepmother bring the two sleeping children from the car to the, that's from the garage to the apartment. So after Anna Yetoba called her father and the emergency services, she then calls Isabella's mother, Anna Carolina. According to Anna Carolina, she gets a call from Anna Yetoba and she was screaming that Isabella had fallen. She didn't understand exactly what she was saying because she was screaming so much so that 
all she got was that Isabella had fallen. She assumed maybe Isabella had accidentally fallen into the building swimming pool. So she tells Anna Yetoba to perform CPR on her, not knowing her daughter had actually fallen from the sixth floor of the building. Meanwhile, Anna Carolina leaves everything she was doing and makes her way to Alexandria's house only to get there and to the front yard within five minutes or so to realize her baby girl was laying there face down, badly injured and in a critical condition. In as much as she just wanted to grab her child and hug her to emergency services arrive, she tried not to touch Isabella because she was scared she might hurt her even the more or even worsen her situation. She just knelt down by her side and started speaking to her, assuring her it was going to be okay, telling her how much she loved her up until the ENT arrived and started attending to Isabella. So Anna Carolina was devastated when she knew Isabella had passed away. She cried her heart out, and so did many Brazilians at the time. I mean, she was just a child. Isabella was buried in the Parque do Pinheiro Cemetery in Sao Paulo district of Yacana. A very large number of people turned up for her service, people who didn't even know her, but they, they were kind of like drawn to her. It was reported that about 18,000 people showed up for her memorial. Meanwhile, things are not adding up on how this situation had happened. The police immediately began to investigate Alexandria Nadoni and Isabella's stepmother Anna Yetoba. At this point, Alexandra and Anna Yetuba provided the authorities with a list of about 23 names of individuals that they should look into as regarding the person Alexandra said he had seen fleeing from the apartment. But when the police looked into this, nothing came of it. It just didn't seem plausible that someone had entered the apartment. The first red flag was when investigators found red vital body fluid that was confirmed to be Isabella's in Alexandra's car. That was when they became aware of the incident. I had talked about earlier about when Anna Yetoba had beat her in the car. Then investigators found more of it in the apartment, on the towel and on the diaper. Apparently someone had been using the towel and the diaper to clean up potential evidence. They also found her vomit on uh, Alexandra's t-shirt, which was interpreted as being as a result of her being choked. There were footprints of her flip-flops next to the window through which she had fallen. There were also traces of nylon from the wire safety net on Alexandre's shirt. Then upon searching the apartment further, the police found fragments of the safety net on a pair of scissors that was hidden inside the apartment. This meant that the safety net had been caught deliberately. Then whoever did this hid the scissors and obviously Isabella did not cut open that safety net and then hide the scissors and then the no intruder will even take the time to do that as well. So forensics found drops of the same vital body fluids at the entrance to the apartment, on the floor of Isabella's brother's bedroom, on the hallway, on the doorknob of the residence, and on the screen of the window from which she had been thrown. At this point, nothing is adding up to support the claim that Isabella fell out of the apartment window. It was more like someone had thrown the little girl out of the window because her injuries were not in any way consistent with the falling. When she fell, the only injuries she had sustained from that fall were only broken wrists. There were no other fractures, but yet she was barely alive. This meant that something else must have happened to her before that fall that would have still led to her demise even if she hadn't fallen out of that window. During her autopsy, the medical examiner will shed more light on why. He said he found injuries on Isabella's body that was unrelated to the fall. Rather, the injuries he saw suggested that she had been punched, beaten, and asphyxiated minutes before being thrown out of the window. She had obvious marks on her neck that aligned with Anna Yetoba's handprints, as well as spots on her lungs and trauma to the skull. She had tongue between teeth and lesions on her heart indicating that she had indeed been asphyxiated. Lisa forget the window Isabella had been thrown from was not the one in her room where her father claimed to have left her. It was the window of her brother's room. So it was just like which intruder would take out all that time that he or she didn't have and to move the girl from one room to the next, then gently cut the safety net and let her delicately like fall to the grass beneath. Why didn't they just drop her on the concrete pavement that was beneath the window of the room she was allegedly sleeping in? 
someone was still being careful and cared enough for Isabella not to let her fall onto the hard concrete. With this evidence, Isabella's father, Alexandre, and her stepmother, Anna Yetoba, were on the 18th of April 2008 indicted by the Sao Paulo Civil Police for Isabella's demise. The trial began on the 22nd of March 2010, that will almost be two years after the incident. Isabella's mother, Anna Carolina, was first to take the stance to testify, and according to her, Alexandre's wife, Anna Yetoba, was extremely jealous of her. And on the night of Isabella's passing, when Anna had called her screaming that Isabella was hurt, she was telling her it was Isabella's own fault that she fell. You can imagine. She also talked about how temperamental Alexandre himself was and how angry he could get over little things. On one occasion in 2003, he had been late on child support payment, so Anna Carolina had spoken to him about it because it was becoming a habit for him. He would not pay child support on time until she had to call him again and again to remind him. She had also told him she enrolled Isabella in a preschool or a daycare of some sort so she could go to work and make money to support her and the family. And Alexander was mad so much she threatened to take the lives of both Anna Carolina and her mother and then vanish with Isabella because according to him, it was Anna Carolina's mother that was giving her all this advice that was making Anna Carolina to misbehave towards him. Anna Carolina went on to say that Anna Yetoba was always insecure and she felt some type of way about the past she shared with Alexandre, so much that she stopped Alexandre from speaking directly with Anna Carolina on issues regarding Isabella's well-being. Instead, if Anna Carolina had anything to discuss regarding Isabella's welfare, she just had to go through Anna Yetoba that she must, in fact, go through Anna Yetoba. Anna Yetoba didn't want her speaking to Alexandre directly. Alexandre's own family were aware that their son's wife didn't like his daughter, so they avoided leaving Isabella with Anna Yetoba at all costs. If Alexandre wasn't going to be around, then his sister would have to sleep with the family. Alexandre's mother had once told a neighbor that she didn't trust Anna Yetoba, that she believed she was crazy enough to throw Isabella out of the window, and this was even before it actually happened. Anna Yetoba was like in a constant competition for Alexandre's attention with little Isabella. She just didn't want Isabella at her house. It was also said that whenever Isabella returned from visiting her father, she would always cry not to go back there. Something was going on with that girl over at her father's house and no one paid attention to it. On the 25th of March 2010, Alexandre takes the stand. He claims he was not aware of what Isabella was going through with his wife, Anna Yetoba. Initially, when he was questioned by the police, he did say that he had been at his in-law's house that evening, and when he returned to the apartment, he saw someone leaving the apartment. That was what he had initially told the police, right? That someone had broken into the apartment and thrown Isabella out of the window. But when authorities pointed out the absence of anything pointing to a break-in because nothing was missing from that house, so there was no indication that someone or other than the house owner had been in that apartment. Alexandre, at this point, while on the stand, denied ever saying that. In fact, he said he didn't remember having mentioned in his testimony to the police at any time that there was a third person in his apartment the day Isabella was thrown out the window. He said that he only remembers saying that he had locked Isabella in the apartment and gone down to get his wife and kids. He somehow puts the blame on Anna Carolina's mother saying that she never wanted Anna to have a child. How does that even relate to the fact that the child's life was taken right under his watch? Alexandre also said that the investigators on the case had asked him to admit that he was the one that took Isabella's life so that they would rule the case as an accidental homicide with no intent. This was pretty much a serious allegation Alexander was making here. Ultimately, he denied having anything to do with what had happened to his daughter, Isabella. When the DA pressed on him as to why he didn't think of helping Isabella when he discovered she was on the floor, he said that he was making sure she was alive. Then he said that it was because he was in shock. Then the third time he said he didn't do anything because a neighbor ordered him not to touch Isabella. But in all of this, he remembered to call his own father and just stare as life slowly went out his daughter. 
Mind you, throughout all of this, from the time Isabella passed to the funeral and the court proceedings, Alexandra had not said a word to his child's mother, even though whatever happened was under his watch. According to him, it was an embarrassing situation, so he didn't know what to say to her. When Anna Yetoba took the stand, she denied having anything to do with what happened to Isabella. She said all the accusations against her and Alexandra were false and that they were innocent. When the police had questioned her initially, she said that Isabella was beaten by her father Alexandre, but now understand she said she only made up that part of the story. Why would she have to make up part of the story if she claims she's innocent? Why would she not just say the truth? She claims to have a good relationship with Isabella, but that the relationship between Anna Carolina and Alexandre was tense because they usually had nasty fights. Alexandria had earlier on on the stand said that they didn't have fights, so this was kind of like another inconsistency. One of their neighbors, Geralda Afonso Fernandez, claimed that she heard Isabella cry out for help a couple of minutes before she was found on the front yard. The police also said they had found pieces of Alexandria's clothing in the bathroom of an uninhabited apartment on the same sixth floor where the apartment was. I think the owner of that apartment was related to them. It's not clear if the police follow up on anything further. I could not find many sources online that talked about this new development. But the point prosecutors were trying to make was that Anna Yetoba had attacked Isabella in the car and then strangled her in the apartment. Alexandra, believing that Isabella was deceased, had then thrown her out of the window to make it appear like the third person was responsible for the attack. I hope you understand it. A lot went on in this trial, even though it was only five days long. So on March the 27, 2010, 29-year-old lawyer Alexandra Nardoni was sentenced to 31 years, 1 month and 10 days in prison. While his wife, 24-year-old Anna Yatoba, was sentenced to 26 years and 8 months in prison. The fact that Alexandra was the victim's father and the fact that Isabella was a minor, not even up to eight, um, 14 years old, was taken into account for the sentencing. The couple were also sentenced to eight months and in prison for procedural fraud because they tried to cover up the crime by attempting to clean up the crime scene. In accordance to the Brazilian law, both sentences are to be served concurrently. When news broke about the sentences, People began to celebrate. There was fireworks all over Sao Paulo and beyond. Everyone knew for a fact these two were guilty right from the jump. They were just so happy little Isabella was able to get some justice. But the story didn't end here. In jail, Anna Yetoba was mostly disliked by other inmates. The fact that she did what she did to her child, they hated her for it. And on Mother's Day, someone sent her a taunting message. Authorities had to move her to another prison and she was placed in solitary confinement for her own safety. Anna achieved progression to the semi-open regimen in July of 2017. What this means is that she will have some type of conditional release where she will have to return back to jail every evening. Just like in the case of Francis K. Georges. I will make that video available shortly. And Alexandre also had his in April of 2019. Both of them were entitled to work outside of prison and also have temporary exit during the year. After being caught in a video conference with her children inside the penitentiary, Anna Yetoba lost this right in June of um, 2020. Anna Carolina, in the years following this case, went on to start a new family of her own. She got married and had a son in 2016 and then a daughter in 2020. In what would have been Isabella's 18th birthday on the 18th of April 2020, she paid a very touching tribute to her. Her little girl will never be forgotten. So that's it for today's case, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you like this type of content so that you will not miss any of my upload. Let me know what you think about Isabella's case in the comments. But until next video, make sure you take care of you and yours.